How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and I'm sure many of you are holdouts who have not yet upgraded to Windows 10. Maybe you're using Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, or I hope not, you might be using Windows XP. Now, there are a lot of reasons why you might not be upgrading to Windows 10, but I'm gonna give you some reasons why I think you personally should at this point, because it is the latest operating system, and I think you will get some benefits out of it and there are some things you can't do with current operating systems. So I've got about seven reasons that we can go over that might convince you that you should upgrade at this time. So first of all, one reason to upgrade is that Windows 10 is still actually free to upgrade for now. Now they have said that you can't upgrade for free anymore, but there is one way to do it, and that is through Microsoft's accessibility page, because they are still offering technically free to people who have issues with hearing or need additional accessibility features. So even if you don't technically have those issues, you can still get the upgrade for free, from their page. However, that is going to end on December 31st of this year. So that was a little loophole. Even though they said you had to pay to upgrade, you could still do that up until now. But if you've been waiting to upgrade to Windows 10 because you thought you'll be able to get it for free forever, that is now going to end. And you are eventually gonna have to upgrade Windows. Eventually, you know that. So you may as well just get it for free while you still can. And one reason why you probably will have to use Windows 10 as opposed to even another version is because Microsoft has pretty much said that Windows 10 is going to be the last version of Windows. And what they mean by that is instead of releasing a big Windows update, a new version every few years, they basically made Windows 10 to be modular meaning that they built it so they could make major upgrades to individual components independently within Windows so they can release major updates every six months and just upgrade the entire operating system in parts instead of the whole thing. So even though it's called Windows 10, they'll probably just rename it to be called Windows at some point and say after five or six years, they will have made so many updates to different parts that it will actually have completely different software than it would right now. So it is technically the last version of Windows because they're just gonna be continuously upgrading it. And that's kind of the reason why, look, if you get it now, you won't have to really upgrade it in the future. So number two is another big reason why I think you should upgrade, and that is for security reasons. There's really no doubt that Windows 10 does have better security than previous versions. I mean, it's just newer and they have integrated a lot of security features that were not available in previous versions. One specific example is exploit protection that used to be part of what was called the Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit. And this was a piece of advanced software that you probably have never heard of before. You wouldn't have really known about it, but it did actually allow power users to prevent exploits in software running on the computer. But now they depreciated that software and integrated it directly into Windows 10 in the latest major update, which was the Fall Creators update. So on top of all the other security features, you're gonna get stuff like exploit protection, so that for example, if you open a PDF that has an exploit built in, then your operating system itself can protect that from being malicious. Not to mention the fact that because Microsoft is continuously working on Windows 10, they're a lot more likely to discover issues with it in terms of security, meaning they will patch it. If they're not actively making new features on Windows 7 or Windows 8, then they are less likely to figure out, hey, that's not supposed to happen. They might rely on security researchers to report these issues and some might be discovered by hackers. So the more actively it's being used, the more likely and secure it is. Now, number three is kind of related to the previous one, and that is that support for previous operating systems is going to be dropped. If you didn't know, Windows 7 support, mainstream support, was revoked in 2015. They stopped doing mainstream support, and they're now just doing extended support into 2020, and that just means they're just gonna do security patches, but they might not be as effective because of the reasons I just mentioned. 
And for Windows 8.1, mainstream support is going to be ending at the beginning of next year in January, meaning they're not gonna be developing any new features and they already stopped in Windows 7, like I just said and they will stop extended support in another three years. So you gotta keep in mind that if you are using an older version of Windows, you're not gonna get any new features, which is kind of a bummer. And while you will get security patches, which are important, some of those new features are something you probably would want. And we'll kind of talk about that in another point. All right, moving on to number four, this is good for gamers, and that is that Windows 10 supports DirectX 12. If you're not familiar with what DirectX is, basically it's an API that allows game developers to better access the hardware in your computer so you can literally run games better and run them more efficiently and just be able to do more stuff. And the new versions of DirectX obviously always allow more features for developers, which means they can do better games. And if they're exclusive, you're only gonna be able to run games on Windows 10. And even if they're not exclusive, but they still support DirectX 12, if you're running it on Windows 10, you can try to run it in DirectX 12 and it might run even better than it would on previous versions. All right, now number five, this has to do with universal Windows apps. Now, I'm personally not really a big fan of the Windows App Store where you get these, but sometimes it is pretty darn useful to use a universal Windows app. Specifically, that is because a universal Windows app is gonna be able to run on any device that uses Windows 10, whether it's a desktop, a tablet, I don't think really Microsoft makes their phones anymore, or get this, an Xbox. That is right, Xbox One actually runs on a modified version of Windows 10. So any apps that you could run on a desktop, theoretically could be enabled to run on an Xbox. And that actually is a pretty cool feature having to do with games, where if you buy an Xbox game, a lot of times you can also run it on your computer and pick up where you left off because it's all the same platform. It's like running it on a very similar system. So there are some games that do allow you to play on the Xbox, then move to your PC and continue playing even with a controller and all that. Also, if you do happen to use apps from the Windows App Store, one good thing is it's a lot easier to keep those up to date because it should theoretically be able to update those automatically instead of having to manually check within the software. But that's another point. I personally like to just download software myself, except if it's in the case of an Xbox, which is pretty awesome. All right, now we're coming near the end. We got a couple more points. So number six is that Windows 10 obviously has more features. And like I said before, they're still developing new features unlike the previous versions. So not only are you gonna get more features right off the bat, there's gonna be more in the future. So one example is the cool nightlight feature, which I've been talking about wanting on computers forever and phones, which basically dims the screen and makes it a little bit more orange at night. So it's just easier on your eyes. It is less likely to keep you up at night. And if you do happen to disable it, you'll be like, whoa, it'll blind you. Like, I can't believe I was using the computer without it before. It's very similar to the Flux program, which I've talked about many times, and also the Night Shift on iOS and also Night Light on Android. So it's really awesome they have it built in. Some additional examples of features include better customization of the start menu. So if you're like me and you absolutely hated the Windows 8 start menu, they kind of improved that. So it's kind of a combination between the Windows 7 start menu and the Windows 10 or 8 start menu. So you basically do get that list of apps but you still have the tiles and you can resize it. You can move it all around. So it is a little bit better. I've gotten used to it. I kind of like it. So that's at least good. Another cool quick feature is virtual desktops. So if you want to keep all your icons having to do with work on one, you can switch between them or all the games on another. So that's pretty convenient. And also another little feature is the task manager has been improved. You got resources on there now. So even if you want to look at stuff like bandwidth being used, GPU utilization, GPU memory, all sorts of stuff that you're just not gonna get in previous versions. All right, now finally, number seven, I kind of touched on this before, but another reason to get Windows 10 is that it will be majorly updated every six months. At least that's the schedule Microsoft has said they want to stick to. So unlike having to wait for major updates every few years, you're gonna get a lot of new features 
every six months. So some examples of these, they did the anniversary update, they did the creators update, then they're doing the fall creators update, which was the most recent, which did introduce a bunch of cool new features. For example, the story remix, it's actually like a video editor that they built in to Windows 10. So if you wanna do some home movies or something like that, you can actually do some pretty interesting effects with it, including tracking that normally you would have to use like After Effects for, but it actually does work pretty half decently and it's super easy. Another example is spatial audio for headphones. So if you didn't know, Windows introduced a feature that basically is virtual surround sound that you can use with any headset and you can now enable that right through the sound icon and that is not available in other things. It's kind of like the Dolby Atmos where it's like virtual 3D, except it's built right into Windows, which is pretty awesome, for example, if you're playing video games. And here's another kind of cool little feature for games, which I was surprised for. They actually introduced a new anti-cheat client called TruePlay. So games in the future might require you to enable this anti-cheat client so you won't have to worry about as many cheaters playing in games, because imagine this. If you have to enable it on the operating system level, if someone gets caught cheating, then theoretically you could be banned from playing any games on that computer, which would be awesome for legitimate players. And I would love to see little kids raging at their whole computer being banned at the operating system level because they cheated. So you never really know what they're gonna add in. And like I just mentioned, a lot of these are pretty cool features. I did actually make another video how to do with the most recent update, the fall creators update and the best features in that. So I'll put a little pop up on that if you wanna watch that. But I think that covers pretty much everything. Those are just some reasons why you might actually wanna update to Windows 10 if you've just been ignoring it. It is a good time because you don't have much time left to get it for free. So if you guys did enjoy this video, let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also be sure to enable notifications by clicking the bell or YouTube might not show you new videos even if you do subscribe because of their garbage algorithm. But anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.